Recently, I installed a few perimeter plants around my garden and I wanted to set up an automatic way to keep the plants watered. As many of you know, I've had success with a PVC drip system, however this time around I wanted to experiment with a commercial based drip system to learn firsthand the pros and cons. Well after a few hours of research, I think I may have found a simple and cost effective solution and I figured I would bring you along for the journey, so let's jump right into it. Before I purchased the drip irrigation components, I spent some time trying to pre-plan the layout for the system. After a day or two, I finally came up with a basic concept that would fit my needs. I then gathered all the components necessary for installing a drip irrigation system and also you can find the links to all the parts I used in this video in the description below. I decided to use 1 half inch poly tubing as my primary line to carry water throughout the drip system to help reduce the overall cost. A pro tip was to place the poly tubing in the sun for 40 minutes to help the tubing become more flexible prior to installation. While the tubing was warming up, I installed a filter that includes a 155 mesh filter inside to help keep debris out of my drip system that could clog the small openings on the drip emitters. I then connected a 25 psi regulator which regulates the pressure within the system. Not installing a regulator could result in the drippers or fittings popping off, water leaks, and irregular flow from the emitters. I then connected a permalock hose thread swivel adapter that would allow me to connect my water source connection to the 1 half inch poly tubing. Before I move forward, if you plan on tying your drip system into your home's watering line and you are using a watering timer, I would suggest you install a hammer arrester which will help protect your home's pipes. You would also need to install a vacuum preventer to help protect your potable water supply from contaminants followed by the filter, the pressure regulator, and finally the hose tubing adapter. Since my water source is connected to my rain barrels and not used for drinking water, I was able to eliminate the vacuum preventer from my installation. I was also able to eliminate the watering timer since I control my water pump from my smartphone. So to cut the 1 half inch poly tubing that would connect to the adapter and fittings, it was recommended to just use standard scissors. A pro tip was to briefly insert the end of the poly tubing into a cup of hot water which would ease the connection process. Since I had perimeter plants on both sides of the garden, I ended up installing a permalock T fitting. What I really like about these permalock fittings is that they require no special tools to install and they are reusable. It's worth noting that all the fittings and adapters used in the drip irrigation system should only be hand tightened and no Teflon tape or glue should be used. I then secured my poly tubing to the wooden post using a 1 half inch tubing clamp. I then focused on the right hand side of the garden. I installed a shut off valve so that I could manage water flow if needed. I will also be installing that shut off valve to the left hand side later in the video. Since it is not recommended to make really sharp turns with a poly tubing, I installed a permalock tubing elbow anywhere I needed to achieve a 90 degree turn. If you enjoy these types of videos, let me know by pressing the like button and subscribing as it helps to inform others about this channel and it also motivates me to continue to spend my time making these videos. I would also like to take a quick moment to express my appreciation to Mark Borden for recently signing up as a new patron. Once I reached the ending point for my right hand side primary tubing line, I had to install a permalock end cap to close it off. I used galvanized steel wire stakes throughout the process to help hold the 1 half inch poly tubing in place. You can also cover or bury the poly tubing if that is your preference. After the main poly tubing line was installed on the right hand side, I started working on the left hand side using the same techniques and similar fittings where necessary.
Once the polytubing had cooled some, I used the pro punch tool to punch a 1 4 inch hole into the polytubing where an emitter would be installed. I like this punch tool due to how easy it is to use but there are cheaper options available that I will link to below. After all the holes were punched, I inserted a 1 4 inch barbed tubing coupler into each hole. I then attached 1 4 inch micro tubing to each coupling. After the 1 4 inch tubing was installed, I installed pressure compensating cleanable emitters that have a half gallon per hour flow rate. I chose these emitters since they can be disassembled and cleaned. If you chose a non-cleanable emitter, you would have to replace the entire emitter if it became clogged. I used stabilizer stakes to help secure the position of the 1 4 inch tubing and emitter and to also keep the emitter off the ground. Here is another type of emitter I decided to try out that has a spike built in. If you are not sure what type of emitter to use for your application, I will provide a link in the description to a dripper buying guide that will provide much more detail for different watering systems. It is also important to check what type of soil you have which would determine what flow rate dripper you should use. In summary, if you have sandy soil, you may want to use a dripper that has a 2 gallon per hour flow rate. If you have loamy soil, you may want to use a dripper that has a 1 gallon per hour flow rate. And lastly, if you have clay soil like me, you may want to use a dripper with a half gallon per hour flow rate. I will provide a link below to a guide that will provide more information about what type of emitter to use based on your soil type. To gain more experience with this style watering system, I wanted to also test using a drip line which is basically a 1 4 inch poly tube with emitters built in. I figured I would test this watering method on my small raised bed that I am using to grow strawberries. I first installed a 1 half inch permalock T fitting into the primary line near the raised bed. I then installed a 1 half inch shutoff valve in case I wanted to control the flow to the raised bed emitters. Afterwards, I installed an end cap. In the future, if I want to tie in the other raised beds into the drip system, I can easily remove the end cap and extend the primary line using a coupler. To connect the drip line to the primary line, I use 1 4 inch barbed couplings and elbows. Also, there are many ways to configure your drip line. This just happened to be the simplest method for my raised bed setup. The drip line I installed has emitters built in every 6 inches since my plants are spaced 6 inches apart. But there are drip lines available with the emitter spaced further apart. To cap off the drip lines, I installed a goof plug. A pro tip is to use needle nose pliers to help ease the process of inserting the goof plugs into the tubing. I also used some leftover garden stakes to help secure the position of the drip line. I then installed tubing clamps to help keep the micro tubing in place. After all the components were installed, I remotely turned on the water pump for the system and then went around and checked for any leaks. I then checked to make sure all the emitters and drip lines were correctly emitting water to each plant. It was exciting to see that everything was working as it should. Overall, this was a very exciting project to take on and I learned that this method of drip irrigation has many benefits and was not as difficult to install as I initially thought. Watering plants this way allows me to water more efficiently due to the drip emitters being placed right next to the plant which can help prevent fungus, weeds, and mildew spread. Also, I like that I can easily winterize the system by unscrewing the end caps to drain out the water in the primary line. For those curious, the total cost of this system was roughly $120 and since most of the components are sold in sets or rows, I had a few spare parts left over. In the future, I may compare the pros and cons between the PVC style drip irrigation I have installed in my other three raised garden beds to this commercial style drip irrigation system. If that is something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you found this video useful or think others might, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.